Hello, Madeleine. It's really good to see you again. Um, and thank you so much for sharing in the footsteps with Didi Dabshad Day. It's, it's a very generous thing to do um, and to have new work being shared with a wider audience at this time. So we really, really appreciate that. I wondered if we could start with the birth of the project because this version is not its original version. So I wonder if you could say something about the journey of In the Footsteps from its beginning to where it is now. I have worked with Didier Darbyshire um, together with Elsa Stensfield on our first films. One of them is called One of These Days from 1973. And the other one is called About Bridges, 1975. And uh, because I was looking in my archive, I find uh, a lot of um, tapes uh, Delia uh, left us for the, uh, for the music. And then I got in touch with um, David Butler, who- Never heard uh, of him. <laughs> Never heard of it, okay. Um, who told us that the Delia Derbyshire archive was at Manchester University. So we managed to make some digital files and that was the beginning of that connection to, to Manchester. And then uh, later on, I heard that uh, beside the archive of Delia Derbyshire, the, also the archive of the Chinese artist Lee was also at Manchester. Uh, um, Manchester Library, um, right? Yeah, whatever it's called, Reynolds Library or something. Yeah, the, jo anyway. the, the John Rylands, and, and amazingly, yeah. both Delia's and Lee's archive have ended up next to each other. Together. Yeah, that's right. And so um, on another Delia Derbyshire day, and I believe it was in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, I was invited. Um, uh, to come to Manchester and because they also were showing there uh, our film one of these days and that's where I met David Butler and Caro Say, the composer, in life. So, um, th so that was the beginning of this, this idea of... Um, then later on, uh, Hamad Nasa, um, wanted to make an exhibition <clears throat> in Manchester Art Gallery. And um, on one of my trips to London, uh, I had a meeting with him and he was very interested in the connection with Delia and Lee, because I am one of the, one of the still alive people who have known both artists very well. And um, so he, uh, so I participated in that exhibition and then there was happening uh, also a big symposium about Lee. So, um, that by, so <clears throat> after the meeting with Nassar, I thought maybe it would be an interesting idea to go and visit uh, uh, the old, the LYC museum and, and the area also where Delia was living in Gilsland. And I'm often in Scotland and for my work. And then I thought maybe I could invite, I had a good uh, a meeting with Cairo and uh, maybe a Cairo and myself could go and visit that. So we met, um, I think it was in Carlisle and, uh, and we drove to the LYC museum and to Gilsland and we discussed this idea of maybe doing a project together. Um, um, so the and then of course th that worked out very well and then the idea of, of maybe having uh, live performances live music and a special videotape what I made partly using also <clears throat> a drawing and this time also my voice I um, I started we started to work on that uh, I think last year um, in 20, 2019, and we were able to get some support from the LYC Foundation and, and Cairo also from Manchester Art Gallery. Um, so I made a video and then Cairo came to Amsterdam in January 2019, and uh, where we worked together for a weekend. And then I came to Manchester in the beginning of March for the symposium. And we did uh, uh, this live performance. What was that? So this like? is in short. 
how it all happened. And after that, uh, we, we sort of maybe or doing the performance again, but or but I was more in favor of saying, well, let's make um, a single channel version of the work. So it could go out in the world without us. And because all the performance, yeah, it always costs a lot of money, you know, getting me to the, the also to the space and, the, and having the projections and having the piano and all those things. So I I do a one live performance is fine in, for, in my case. And then let's have a, a single uh, channel video what can go into the world. And what was that so, like for you, Madeleine, to, to return to the, the LYC gallery and Gilson? Because because you, 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 you and Elsa exhibited there uh, in the yeah. 1970s and, and you stayed with Delia as well at that time. So it, when, yeah. was, when, when was the last time you were there and, and what was it like to, to return to, um, to that place? Um, well, especially in the 70s, we visited uh, Delia when she was living in Gilsland on our way mostly to Glasgow. Um, and then <clears throat> later on, Delia was living at LYC. At, at the museum and then when we were on our way to Scotland we also visited them and we got to know Lee and um, and then they asked us also maybe to exhibit there and, and we did each our own work I, I showed silk screen and Elsa showed a sequence of photographs with a drawing and then we were also working at that time in Middlesbrough and we were making a new work <clears throat> We were invited by um, the director of Teesside's College of Art, and he wanted us to make a new piece, um, what was also site specific, uh, and it's called Horizontal Flow. And we talked to Lee about it, and he was very excited about video as an art medium. So after we showed it uh, at, at Teesside College of Art, we also, took the, um, the installation, but it's five monitors, five small monitors and um, two videotapes, black and white, of course, in 1977, November. Um, and we also showed it for a weekend at Lee's. That was the first video installation mm. uh, here, what was ever shown at the LYC. And I think also we were there at 77, 78 at, um, at St. Sylvester, the, you know, the last day of the year. Uh, I think playing darts or something like that with Lee and Delia. So, so that was the last time we, I saw Delia and Lee together there. But later on in the 80s, when the museum was closed, we still saw Lee sometimes. And Delia had moved back down. Um, and in 1986, I think it was, uh, um, Lee came to, to the Netherlands, but he, he, he couldn't travel when he was building his museum. And uh, at that time, Elsa was already uh, head of the department in, the, uh, in Maastricht of the Jan van Eyck Academy, time-based media, and she had a big house there. So we invited also Lee to come there and at that time I was doing some calligraphy so uh, and I had a whole set and, and I asked uh, Lee if, if he likes to do some calligraphy because he used to do that when he was living in Taiwan and uh, so we filmed that and then I think a year later we made a work called Point in Time mm. um, and there Part of that is also Lee making calligraphy. And that, that videotape was also found in the, um, in the archive of Lee. So that's why they contacted me for that uh, exhibition at Manchester Art Gallery. So this is a little bit how I understood that everything was connected, let's say it like that. Mm. So I also have several works of Lee, but which he made at that time and also um, another artwork that I have of him. So I used part of that um, 
in the in the videotape in the footsteps. And so with um, the live version, um, and for people who don't know, then the, you know a lot of our viewers won't um, won't have experienced it. Um, I was at the Manchester City uh, Gallery last last year, as you say. Um, but that live element, there were—I mean, you have performed live many times, but this this had something in it which I think you hadn't done before, which was your live voice um, and uh, and singing. So, how how was that? And were you glad not to do that in the in the in the in the fixed ver the fixed media version? But uh, yeah, how did how did that come how did that come about? And how how was that as an experience? Yeah, well, it was, it was partly uh, Cairo's idea, and uh, I always like to to uh, try something new and then because the in in that case the um the drawing uh, uh, what i was doing was only on the second part of the performance so we thought well, well what would i be doing in the first part and so this idea of using the voice came up so um i think it it, uh, it worked quite well but um of course i can't really hear it but when I was doing it, but I saw the recording <laughs> and then, yeah, it makes it quite lively also because uh, Caro using uh, just live piano combined with electronic and using also her voice. So in that way it became, yeah, well, how to say it, very human. Mm. It, it, and yeah. it also, it, it gives quite a connection to a lot of Delia's work where she uses her own voice as a you know as the sound exactly. yeah. that, that's, that's, that's yeah. it. it feels like a, a kindred spirit without the piece feeling that it's not um sort of as you say it's in the footsteps it's in the spirit of Lee and Delia but it never feels certainly with Carol's music it never felt to me that it was doing a uh, a pastiche of Delia's style it, it was its own very much its own thing um but you can yeah. hear the you can hear the connections but it feels, you know, it feels mm -hmm. its own, its own piece, yeah. So, yeah. what, what for you is are the major differences be between the live version and the um, uh, the fixed media single channel version? Um, well, I think the uh, um, you call it mixed media, whatever version, but uh, or single channel version. Never mind how you call it. Um, is that it is because very concentrated now. You can only kind of uh, 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 concentrate on the image. And of course, I hope also when people listen it on online, it would be best with headphones, you know, to, to hear the very good sound that Carol made. And of course, my voice is not in it because it's just uh, Carol, but, um, yeah, I think it is, uh, if people don't know or haven't seen the live performance, I it, it think it makes, it makes sense as, a, as, a, as a, a piece on its own. Yeah. Very much so. I, I think having um, been fortunate to experience both versions, um, th this one, I, I completely agree with what you're saying about that concentration that I found myself, um, and listening to it on headphones as well, so immersed in the world and and this concept of the point and i wondered if you could say something for um the viewers about lee's idea of the point because it was so central to his uh his philosophy his artistic um philosophy and it's a it's a very strong feature of uh in the footsteps with the with the central image um and its connection to the cosmos as well so I'm sure you would want the audience to make their own connections and to, you know, to and, and see where that takes them. But I wondered for you if you could maybe just say a little bit about the idea of the point as you understand it and, and what you took from it. Um, is that something that Lee talked about with you? Well, yeah, it is. Uh, he called it as the cosmic point, if I'm correct. And that's one of the reasons I also wanted to use some original images from the cosmos i mean they're they are from the hubble te telescope i did a lot of research of trying to find the right image and also uh, because of the point i was using the image is round you know and i use a round image um, and uh, i think that way also 
you you can feel more and concentrated on that on that everything is round and in that way i uh, i try to um, to put it in my own kind of visual language and that 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 kind of, that, that notion also links to the um the statement in in there without giving spoilers for, for the viewers who have who are yet to see the piece mm -hmm. but obviously that yeah. you know, the, the um that notion of the connected nature of of life and you, you, the universe which i know is very important to you i wonder could, could you say something a little bit more about about that oh well, there is a little text in <clears throat> in the video which i'm not going to quote but uh, um Yes, that was made also the connection for me also with Lee and he's sitting in the middle of nature and for me also nature was very important. So that whole idea of, of trying to put some nature in, into the work, but not like pretty pictures, but trying to also, you know, try to go beyond that was the idea and you're using also his beautiful calligraphy and uh, you know that that way of working. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's how that's how uh, in that way it becomes also very much part of the work of Elsa and myself because nature was a very important inspiration for us mm -hmm. and still is for me. Yeah. And actually, that that it just makes me think of um, Delia's first collaboration with with um, with Elsa um, on. Um, circle of light you know which is just natural sounds and electronic uh manipulations or creation or recreations if you like of, of, of natural sounds um i wondered if you could say something about your approach to sound madelong because obviously caro is, is working on the sound here but you, you know you, you create sound for your own work as well um and i wondered if you could say something about you know your kind of your sort of aesthetic about sound how you like to use sound what you like to do with it and and i i guess what you understood was delia's approach to sound as well because i hear a lot of delia's kind of again a sort of an affinity in terms of what delia was doing with her approach to sound with with your approaches um as well well first of all um <clears throat> this elsa uh, elsa stansfield I met her in 1966 when we were both a student at the Ealing School of Art. Um, Elsa had been, uh, been uh, going to the Glasgow School of Art, but she wanted to do photography and film. And at that time, that was too advanced for, the, for the, that ac academy. She so had to go to London. And I was doing photography and I got a kind of scholarship from the Eurofoot and I was a guest student on that, uh, on the Ealing School of Art. It was in 1966, a wild time also in London. And that's how I met her. And uh, later on, uh, I met her um, actually, I think in 72, when she had started a, a studio at eight, nine and 10, together with Pat Holland, uh, also an editor who had used to work a film editor. And Brian Hudson and Delia started in 73, uh, Electrophone, also in eight, nine and 10. So, you know, I was got in contact with all this beautiful music. And um, when, when we started to make our first film, Elsa and myself, De Elsa suggested, well, why not ask Delia for the music? And uh, of course I didn't know about her. So she said, we, she rented a kind of viewing theater because that's what you had to do down those days. And I and I saw Circle of Light, and I, I and and I loved the soundtrack. I said, you know, and Elsa explained that she did most of the natural sounds and Didia, the, the other electronics and so on. So I learned a lot from Didia and Elsa about sound in general, uh, and. Um, Unfortunately, Elsa Stansfield died in 2004. So, um, and that way after that, uh, I have continued um, my work, my done under my own name, but in the spirit of our collaboration. 
and you know, I used to l listen to a lot of contemporary music, and I also met people like John Cage and so on, also Buddhists like myself. So uh, yeah, it has influenced me a lot, and also Didier using in our first film a lot, a lot of words, but I liked, you know, um, and she came also to the shoot of our film. She came to, you know, to Amsterdam and. It's also not that we were, and so that was also the approach I wanted to do with Cairo, that you very early on on the project want to have the composer involved already, not having the piece ready and say, oh, I need to 30 seconds of music there. Mm. So that was never our way of working. And I learned that also a lot from Elsa. And that's why I invited Cairo to come to visit with me the LYC and that she could see maybe, you know, would she be interested of, you know, we didn't know each other very well. So we had to see, would there be an interest in the subject and would there be a possibility in collab collaboration? That was very much in the footsteps of, of you and Delia, wasn't it? Because yes. if you say Delia came yeah. to Amsterdam when you were making uh, in Van die Dagen one of these days, that you know, yeah. it, was important, it was important to you that Delia would come and like you say, not just yeah. sort of yeah. parachute in at the end, but be there. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and all the, the other times when I have worked with Composer, because I, last year I just did a very beautiful new piece called Everything is Round with the composer Louis Andriessen, mm. uh, the well-known, world-known, uh, but he had never made an electronic piece. So I, I worked with an assistant of, of him, Malou Peters. And so we uh, actually managed to make a beautiful new piece with, for an installation, but was a commission from the Central Museum in, uh, in Utrecht. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that way also it's very early on, I think two, three years ago, I already uh, got involved with Louis Andries uh, about the piece, you know. One of the things I wondered and you know, I hope this doesn't sound too fanciful, but that that kind of approach to using the sounds of the everyday world around us, mm -hmm. whether that's natural sounds or the sounds of machinery, you know, like electronic sounds in you know in, in the domestic space or outdoors. Mm -hmm. But I, I wondered if that because that to me feels again kind of in keeping with a, a, a sort of you know buddhist principles of the connect you know the interconnected nature of life that everything around us you know has you know is, is all involved and i wondered if that's just something that it, whether consciously or unconsciously is something that appeals to you about using sound in that way so out of an uh, out of an everyday sound we can transform that into something you know beyond that I don't know if that's something that you yeah, think yeah. about with it, but well, it, it's a good point. I, I, um, I think it's partly through John Cage, but I really started to listen to all the sound, you know, all the time you hear sounds around it, and um, and I think also that 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 influenced me a lot. Like if you do live performance, of course, then you try to kind of say, well, we don't want other sounds, we are only going to create our sounds ourselves, but otherwise it is always, you know, whenever you are, even if you listen to a piece, there's always, to a sound piece, I mean, you always see other sounds around you, and that I often like that combination of, of the surrounding sounds and the, the sound what is kind of composed, yeah. so uh, and that may you are aware of everything. And so that is also very much a Buddhist thought. That's a good point. Yeah. And was, was, was that something... everything is interconnected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you going back to those first two films that you, that you and Elsa made with Delia, uh, one of these days and about bridges, the, because there's a, a really fascinating mix of sounds on those two films. And I mean, one of the things that seems really striking to me is that 
prior to that, that, that Delia was working with you at a time when she was in the process of leaving and, and had left the BBC. Um, yes. And you, you hear a number of her projects for the BBC leading up to that time where she's often recycling earlier sounds that she created and doing new things with them. So, you know, she's not just sort of copying and pasting them, but she, you know, she's transforming them into new forms. But one of the things that I find really striking about her music for the two films with you and Elsa is it all sounds really fresh and new material. And, and I don't know whether that's because you gave her that time Whereas when she's at the BBC, it's almost like, you know, you've got two or three weeks to do this or, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure on that. But yeah. they, they just feel like there's um, a sort of a new lease of life here um, that, you know, she's bringing new sounds and, and, and instruments that she hadn't done before, that she hadn't used before. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know, yeah, if, if that was something that you sensed or you know in, in in working on it if you asked for certain things voices in there a lot and um you know repetition of the word mouth in in one of these days so yeah. did you that that was obviously like dialogue back and forth but yeah how, how did those sounds uh, and sound worlds for those two films come about because they're very different um yeah, well, I think it's especially, I think uh, Didier trusted Elsa very much because Elsa also brought in both films also, you know, uh, uh, other sounds in it besides the sounds of Didier. And, uh, uh, and, and also uh, because it took us a long time to make the film and also to make an English version because like there are two versions also in the soundtrack because she's using in the first one uh, the the, it's it's the 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 artist uh, the the graphic designer who is the main character in one of these days um, called Marta Reuling and uh, uh, Delia used uh, part of of her voice of Marta Reuling uh, to and and then treated those um, uh, those um, words but when she had to make the English version then of course. So he had to use Marta's English because, um, and then made other words, used the same words, but in English. So there were actually two soundtracks in that way. And that made it quite special. And, um, but also we, we, we didn't put so much pressure on it. Like she, she, part of the reason she wanted to leave the BBC, I believe that, uh, that there was too much pressure for her. Mm -hmm. And she, she uh, you know, when she was finally left, she, she, she didn't want to have, say, oh, a deadline like that, you know, it has to be ready next year and uh, next month. So that gave her more freedom. So I believe that's maybe why she would try something new, you know. And could you say something about, about Bridges as well? Because that's, that's a, you know, again, so like, you know, like a, ve a very different film, um, but the, the music in that, what, what, what the music brings to that, that particular, uh, particular film. Yeah, and that way, of, uh, of course, Lydia didn't come uh, to Amsterdam for, the, for that film. And um, so we, we edited in, um, in London at 8, 9 and 10. And, and of course, there is a, a visual theme of people passing over a bridge uh, and uh, so that was also the idea that maybe that with the visual, visual theme there would be also a sound theme that could you know put together give the film more kind of a feeling of a whole mm -hmm. um, and that that's how I remember it that uh, that uh, Lydia made that beautiful tune of people mm -hmm. passing over the bridge yeah and was did you ever talk about the possibility of a third film or was that something that never never really never really came up at? well we worked on a third film and then uh Didier wasn't so much available but brian was so we 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 worked with him a little bit but that you know was not the same let's say it like that and uh, um, we only made a kind of pilot and unfortunately that film didn't happen so we didn't continue working with 
uh, with, with Brian. And, and 1975, of course, was also the time that everybody had to leave 8, 9, and 10 uh, Neil's yard because the market, uh, Covent Garden market, moved away from the center of London. And, and, and that whole area became very commercial. If you go and visit now 8, 9, and 10, you know, that of Neil's yard, it's with all white doves <laughs> flying around. Uh, but, um, and so I think Brian uh, went to another place, but we went, Elsa and I went to Wapping, to the east of London, and had a studio there, but was also quite inspiring near the Thames. And also, and uh, that was also the time when we made this this uh, site specific work for the Whitechapel Art Gallery, what is now uh, very um, we are very fortunate. It is now in the collection of the Tate in London. Mm. That work, but, but, but so, of course, uh, about bridges was was not the last time that some of Delia's music appears in your work because. Uh, when you started making uh, video pieces with, with Elsa, you um, brought back in some of her earlier music for you. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes that we, we, we uh, I think it is in the piece um, Labyrinth of Lines, but, but we recreated again in the MUCA, Museum of Contemporary Art in Antwerp, that is also in their collection. And then, of course, when I was listening to the sound, I said, oh, there is some some little bits of pieces from Didia sound in that. I mean, that way also we were working a lot with uh, most of our other, <coughs> excuse me, other kind of work. We sometimes used something from a previous piece into a new work, you know, because it's a continuing way of working. And, um, and of course we had the possibility just to use the sounds, you know, that was, that was um, no problem, I mean not knowing that Didia would become so well known after she died. But um, anyway, that, that was, uh, and we used, I think the word, uh, I think we used um, Moy, I think, no? Beautiful, Moy, that word. <coughs> Sorry, just have to drink something. Well, that's a, it's an appropriate word for us to, I think, Think to close on because um, yeah, uh, in the footsteps it, it is a beautiful piece, um, and I wondered maybe, especially I think you know to share that with people at this time where you know it's so difficult for people to access work is is, is so generous of you, Madeline and Caro as well. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, thank you again for that, and I'm, I wondered maybe if we could just close really by asking what you're working on now because. Uh, obviously, your work is still happening, um, and you've you've done a piece recently uh, reflecting on the importance of the bees to uh, to human existence and the you know and the planet. But maybe if you could say something about what what you're working on now and what what is on the horizon. Um, I know you've got a Venice residency. Hopefully, is going to happen at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, hoping to also to work more with sound. Um, uh, I got an invitation to make a site-specific site work in the autumn of 2021. And uh, I partly want to use um, the animals who fly in the night, bath. You know, yeah, if I, uh, and, and they work with sound, of course, with echo, with radar, you know, that mm -hmm. idea of that how they can fly and find the insects. They, um, so so um, that is fascinating me. Um, and um, I work, want to make a video, but also a big installation, and maybe using a zoetrope. Oh, wow. You know, the beginning of cinema. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the kind of thing what you turn around with the little slits, yeah. and then, in the inside, I want to maybe uh, use a flying bath. Yeah. Bath. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, so this is, and and in the in the uh, sound piece, I want to maybe use uh, that uh, Doppler effect. Mm -hmm. 
yeah hmm. so otherwise that's all the ideas i have now we'll see how it is working out but um also um yeah that it, it's a place that is in the middle of nature and um there i found little kind of boxes attached to the trees and those boxes were for those baths mm. so, so uh, mm -hmm. um, that's what, how i started to do some research on on those flying animals mm. do you have did you have to the do we have them sort of like um, we call them bats and we have a lot of them where yeah, um, bats. yeah. Uh, where, bats. yeah. where i am at the moment um the, there's you know you go out at dusk and they yeah. start to come out um and i wonder whether you have them around where, where you live are they sort of they're not in they're not in your house they're not they're, they're no, not, no, they're no. The no I, I live in in the city but yeah, uh, of course in that, that place where i'm going to have this exhibition there they are very close they are there so um so it's kind of fascinating isn't it yeah well and such also a that, well such a sound they, they were, yeah with the electric magnetic sounds that they have this uh, kind of uh, radar or whatever inside them or how it works so i I think it's quite fascinating. Do you know a lot about them? Um, only that we're not supposed to do anything nasty to them because they're a protected species right. where, like, where we live. So we've got to be very careful about them. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, we, we love the bats. Um, <laughs> we, yeah. we, we have, but also, we have them. <laughs> but no, but, but also the bats, are, they, they eat insects a lot. You know, and they also, also I think they, yeah anyway so i i'm i'm doing a lot of research about them so we'll see if, if, if all will happen but yeah, they are important also in our uh, the structure in nature and the biodiversity mm. if i say it correctly so mm. so so it keeps me busy busy as a bee <laughs> yeah yeah busy as a bee all right <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Madeline, it's been an absolute joy to talk with you um, and to see you again. I hope it's not too long before we can meet up in person and welcome you back to Manchester yeah. and the UK at some point. I hope so. Uh, well, I maybe should bring my B film to Manchester. It would be the perfect city for it because Manchester yeah. is, is yeah. the B city. Uh, the B is, the, yeah. you know, is, um, is our symbol there. So that just right. like that, that's got to happen at some point, I think. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much again, Very good. Um, take care. And, okay. uh, farewell. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.